All right, in this module, we're going to be looking at the bullet chart. Now, the bullet chart is a variation of a bar graph. So if you've looked at bar charts or bar graphs before, it's a variation of that. But it was designed to address some of the problems that there are with gauges. Uh, some of you may already be familiar with a gentleman named Stephen Few. He's kind of a design expert when it comes to visualizations. He's really a visualization expert. And he started kind of with a, with a basic bar chart and developed bullet graphs or bullet charts from that. It's inspired a bit from a traditional thermometer chart and a progress bar found in a lot of dashboards that you may be doing today. But the bullet chart really serves as a replacement for dashboard gauges and meters that you might be using now. The bullet chart was really developed to overcome some of the fundamental problems that you have with those gauges and meters that you might be using right now because they typically display not very much information. They require a lot of space on a dashboard and they're really cluttered with the useless and distracting decorations. Think of a gauge. When you uh, use a gauge, it takes up a large amount of space on a dashboard, but it really doesn't show that much information. And usually it's very focused in on one category of data. Well, when you use a bullet chart, you can split it up into multiple categories like you see on the screenshot here. It allows you to show more and you can really orient it the way that you want. You can use it either horizontally or vertically that supports both of those with the bullet chart. Now, this visualization was developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can use it, where you download it, and what to do with it once you download it. All right, so your first step is going to be to go to the Visuals Custom Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that'll take you to the Custom Visuals Gallery. You're going to scroll down until you find the bullet chart. There are actually is multiple bullet charts that you can download. One of them is inside the Power BI Gallery, and one of them is actually created by another company. We'll talk about that in a later module. But uh, for this one, what we want to do is go ahead and download the bullet chart that you'll find in here. This one is developed by Microsoft. The other one is developed by another company. And you can download the visual here. You can also download some of their samples to take a look at how it works as well. So once you download it, you'll go ahead and go back over to the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to go over to the Power BI desktop here. And my first step here is, of course, you can start by importing the visual or you can go start by bringing in the data. Uh, this time, I'll go ahead and start by importing the visual here. So I'm going to go over to the visualizations pane select that I want to import from a file and tell it, yes, I want to import a custom visual. I'll point it to the bullet chart, which you'll see inside here, which I've already downloaded it. You can download it from the site I showed you just a moment ago. I'll select open to make that added now into my visualizations pane. You can see it over here. And then now my next step is going to be to go get my data. So I'm going to come up to the top ribbon here, select get data, and I'm going to be pulling in from an Excel file. The file that we have here is going to be from the class files. You can also find a link to where to download this at the bottom of this video that you're watching now. And I'm going to go underneath the data section of the class files. And I will go find the file here that is called the file that is called computer hardware sales right here. So I'll select computer hardware sales. Go ahead and double click on that to open that up and bring it into Power BI. I'll then select in the navigator pane. I'll hit the sales spreadsheet. That's the only spreadsheet that I have inside this example. So I'll go ahead and select that spreadsheet and then select load. If I needed to make any changes to the data, I can click edit and that'll take me to the query editor. In this case, the data is fine as it is. So I'll select load. That's now going to load this data into my data model. You can see the, the fields that have been added over here on the left hand, on the right hand side, excuse me. And so what I can do is if I want to start with using the bullet chart, I can select the bullet chart to add it into my design pane here, my design surface. And then I want to start to apply different fields to it. Now, you'll see there's quite a few fields that you can choose from here. Some of them are optional. You don't have to use every one of these. We're going to use many of them in this example, but not all. And so what I'll do to start is I'll bring in something like the product. So if you're following along, go ahead and select the product field here. And then I want to see the profit and see whether or not we are making our goals or our target values whenever we're selling the particular product. So I'll bring in the actuals. So there's what the actuals look like. As far as a bullet chart shows, that's the middle black line that shows in the middle of the bullet chart is the actual values. And then my target, I have a field in here called target. I'm going to use that. And when I select the target, you'll notice that it automatically puts these thresholds in here for the uh, not meeting expectations, the bad, the kind of not the satisfactory, uh, the good section, and above uh, uh, very good section here. So they have multiple sections here you can kind of use as far as the thresholds that appear on the bullet chart. Uh, now, in this case here, you can see that this is this looks pretty good. It's showing up there nicely here. But if you want to be able to actually have some data-driven goals, you can see in this data set that we're using right now, we do have the ability to add in some fields that are going to make our goals or our thresholds here. So what I can do is if I come down here where you see uh, the needs improvement, satisfactory, good, very good, max, 
you have a min and a max, that's the top level and the bottom level of this. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the poor, and I'm going to drag that underneath the satisfactory, I'm sorry, needs improvement section. And you'll see that actually adjusts the red section that I have here. I'll then bring in satisfactory, and I'll drop that into the satisfactory section here. And then I'll finally bring in the excellent, and I'm going to drop that underneath the good section here. And when you do that, you'll notice that it does adjust the chart and adjusts it based on the data that we have inside of our custom visual data set that we're using here. The data set here called sales has the ranges of our thresholds. Now you can adjust those thresholds manually as well. If you wanted to do that, you can go underneath the format paintbrush here. Let's go ahead and go over there and take a look at some of the properties that we have available to us here. So I'm going to select the format paintbrush. I'll work our way down here and talk about some of the properties that we have available to us. Uh, first thing I'll point out is, hey, you got all these settings that you've had in all of the other data sets or all of the other custom visuals. You have those here as well, whether or not you want to show the title. I can turn the title on or off if I want. If I want to have a background color, I can do that. You can certainly turn on a background color if you want. Locked aspect ratio, we've talked about a number of times. It basically just locks the proportions of the chart. Underneath general, you can just place it on a certain position on the chart. You'll also see you can add a border to it. That might be nice for this example. So I can add a border to this if I'd like to. You can see that show up here. Very nice. Uh, you can also then see some of the contextual settings that are only for bullet charts. So for example, you have things like orientation. If I go down to the orientation property here, you'll see there's actually four different options as far as the orientation that you can select from here. You have the ability to do horizontal left to right. So if I select horizontal left, you'll see that's what we're looking at right now. If you select horizontal right to left, you'll see that it goes from the right to the left and with these uh, categories showing up on the right hand side, the labels. You can also set these as vertical. So if I select vertical top, you can see here what happens. It makes it into a vertical bullet chart. You can also select vertical bottom, which basically flips it around there and just gives you a different perspective on it. So very interesting that you have a different couple options there as far as what you want to show and where you want the labels to appear. Very nice options in here as far as the orientation. You can also change some things as regards to the colors. So if you don't like the colors that are being used in here, you can adjust the colors. If you go underneath the setting here for colors, you can see you can change what is the bad color, which right now is kind of dark maroon. You can change needs improvement to a different color other than the red that you see here. And again, satisfactory, good, and very good can all be changed. You can even change the bullet color. That's the black line in between. If you wanted to change the bullet color, you can come and tell it that you want it to be something like maybe white in here. So you have the ability to adjust some of those. I think black probably makes sense for what we're doing here, but just point out the fact that you can change those colors. The other thing you should take a look at is the access section here. If you look down at the axis properties, you can see whether or not you want to actually have that axis turned on. You'll notice here what that's doing on the chart is it's actually taking on and off the data la the labels that we have on the chart. You can also change the color of those labels. If you want to make it darker, maybe you make it a more solid black in here, you can do that. You can also add in a measure label if you wanted to, and it basically tells you what, do you what are the measure units. You can give some kind of description of what the units are that we're looking at here. If you wanted to do that, you could put something in here like uh, uh, dollars or whatever it is that you're measuring. If you add that in, you'll notice that it appears over here on the, right below each of the categories. It tells you what you're looking at here now. So that's the measure units. You can add that right below there, and it puts a little label on there. You could also add in a color if you want to have it show up in black. It makes it a little clear to see. That property is in here as well. You can also turn it off. Turn it on and off. We showed that a moment ago. All right, so that's the axis property. The other one here that's kind of interesting that I want to point out is the category labels. So underneath category labels, you can turn on or off the category labels. You can see that's the section that we had on the far left. So if you want to turn on or off the labels, you can do that right there. You can also do things like change the color of the labels, maybe increase the text size, make it a little easier to read. You can do that just by simply bumping up the text size there like I just did. Again, that's just underneath the category labels. You can turn up or turn down the size of those category labels, make it a little easier to see. So a lot of settings here. The one last one I'll highlight for you is the data values. Underneath the data values, if you want to actually adjust manually what the thresholds look like here, you noticed uh, earlier that we had this all being data driven where you can actually set up the thresholds of whether it's in green or black, uh, green or uh, dark red or red or yellow was all data driven, but you can also manually overwrite that in this data value section here. So for example, if I want to change what it means to be very good, I can change what very good here is by adjusting it from 125%. I can make it 150, click away from it, and you'll notice that it actually had an adjustment in the thresholds that we saw just a moment ago. So you can adjust that in here. You'll notice if, again, if I put that back to 125, that it adjusted back to where it is. You can also up or, or decrease or increase the maximum length of the 
bullet chart itself. So if I wanted to bump this down a little bit, say for example I moved that down to 150, you'll notice the chart adjust based on the changes that you make here. All right, so there's a lot of things you can use and adjust and play around with the bullet chart. I think this is really an interesting chart that a lot of people are very interested in learning about how to use. You've got a nice example here, hopefully, of how to use it and a lot of the settings that you can use to customize it. Hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, look forward to seeing you in our next one.